everybody, Custabot11 here, and welcome back to Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay, let's see here. What kind of shenanigans can I get myself into? Let's see here. There's the Abigail Roberts mission. The mission, what is it called? Advertising the New American Art. And then there's Molly O'Shea. And then, of course, there are the bounty hunting missions. We, oh, and of course, there's Albert Mason, the photographer. Question is, which one do I wish to do? Do I want to go kill Black Bell? Or Flaco Hernandez because I can't currently kill uh, Billy Midnight on account of this being a weapons free zone currently. So ah, we're gonna kill Black Bell today, mainly because she is closest, and I don't feel like right. I don't feel like riding several hours. Don't feel right Just. To get myself. Hey, Sean. I'm not gonna do your thing. Not yet. Eventually. But not yet. Hey, uh. Fuck, I forgot your name. Hey. All good out here? Uh, fuck. What was his name? I literally cannot remember. That wasn't Charles. Ah, oh, damn. It's been so long since I went drinking with that guy that... I done did forgot his name. And that makes me sad. Because I like him. I'm gonna have to Google that later. An escape friend. You gotta help me out here. Come on, please. I'm about done here. If I don't get these shackles off soon, I'm gonna. Please. This is crazy. Just shoot the shackles. One bullet. That's all. Okay. What the hell? Okay. You have a good day, then. Okay, then, girl. What a neat fella. I like how he just assumed that the first individual he saw would shoot the shackles. He's a trusting fella. I feel like he didn't commit the crime that he was want that he was put in prison for. I feel like his issue was he was far too trusting of a band of misfits who got him in some dumb digging trouble. Unfortunately for him, however, he is of course now wanted for evading the law. And breaking out of jail. So, if he is caught, he will be put in prison for a legitimate crime. However, I personally do not believe that that was his fault either. That man is far too trusting. My thought is a guy in prison, uh, possibly on the way to being taken to prison, was like, Hey, dude, you want to go for a walk in? He was like, Oh, golly, mister, I don't think we're allowed to be going out side the cage and he was like god oh, no nah, we're allowed to go out as long as it's for like a few 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 minutes and he was like golly gee i'll go for it so they go go for the walk and now they're broken out and motherfucking shit cut
I cannot get off of this goddamn rock. Um, um. Um, um. Shit, fuck, whore bitch, cunt, fuck. Um. Jesus, fuck. Huh. Okay, okay, there's one more. There's one more. Am I in danger? There we go. Okay. Think I got him. Now, who was you? A Lamoran Raider? Yes, you is. Yes, you is. You were not all too thrilled about me. Doing what I did. But that's perfectly fine. Howdy. Okay. Note to self, I gotta start using my provisions more. Because I just don't use them. But I should. Gets me out of those... Tufts. Okay. What the hell? What you writing? Here's that empty town I found. Okay. What do we got here? A cup of grapes. We got a cup of grapes. Okay, let's see here. Jimmy Harson killed by knife, wound. May he find eternal peace in heaven. Daniel Curley had his life taken. Glenn Yeatman killed by knife, wound. Curtis Bangs. I think that's what that says. Murdered. Oh, hold on. Hershey! I want my sniper riffle. I want my sniper riffle so I can read. That there. Is it just me or is it getting foggy? Is that because I'm looking at gravestones? And reading how these individuals died? Jimmy Hawson killed at fifteen years old. That's is young. Can't really see that. Was this in the foot? Uh ho! It's got age of fifteen.
could have. Baines, Curtis Baines, murdered. Can on that's all I can see from that. Edmund Tobin, born July 1851, killed by gunshot in September of 1883. He was 29 years old. Leora Yeatman, killed by gunshot. 50 years old. Their wife and mother. Okay, so that was Curtis Yeatman's... No, not Curtis. It, Glenn. That was Glenn Yeatman's mother. Jess, Jesse Yeatman. Murdered. Age 14. A tragic loss of a beautiful soul. Okay, so that must have been Glenn's uh, sister. Asa Hassan. Found murdered. Age of 34, beloved mother. What? Don't desecrate the... Okay, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. Merla Curla. Mer... Amelia Curley. Died of a gunshot to the head. Age 66, I'm guessing either mother or grandmother. Reginald Yeatman. Killed by gunshot. 43, loving father. Okay. That is neat to know. Well. Twinkie. Tw uh. Twinkie. Stay. Stay, Twinkie. I am exploring. And I want my gun to be nice and out. Can I come in here? No, I can't. It's boarded. Hmm. You know, I'm not... What's the word? Soup. Fuck, what is that word called when you believe in the supernatural? Superstitious. I'm not superstitious. But something tells me I probably shouldn't explore this place at night. I might get attacked by a ghoul. Or a ghost. And if I get attacked by a ghost, I can't kill that ghost and... Lord knows that would ruin my day. Well, let's cook me up a nice plane of... Flaky fish. God damn it, Arthur. Don't you have a goddamn thing of salt or pepper? I mean, you gotta. But I guess you don't. Okay, let's tear down the camp and then pressing the wrong button and then continue to search this here abandoned air. How far away are we from it? Ah, here. We oh, marked it on the map too. Okay, let's go Twinkie. I guess what we can do is... Let's start by exploring this because it looks like I can actually come in here. I hope. The town of Pleasant. This looks like uh, a house. Okay. I love the lighting. 
Ooh. What is this? Otis Miller. Otis Miller. Did that door just close or did it just open? Well. Otis Miller and the Boy from New York. Number 67 in the series of original tales of Otis Miller's adventures. Then when he had first arrived in New York City, his nose bristled at the foreign sights and smells, and he had a thirst a mile long. Otis sat on his... The fuck is that sound? I'll kill it. Okay. Just so that we're aware. Now I'm going to read this book in this obviously haunted hair area. And y'all are going to leave me the fuck alone. Otis sat on his horse. He looked on at the wagons and refuge and the cacophony of city noises and shoeless children running and workmen heading home and women carrying bags of groceries and shouts and sounds that drowned his ears. The re you know, that, that sentence could have could have gone for a, a couple commas, but whatever. The red reflection of the sunlight cut between the buildings and seemed to sever them in two like a curtain of some bo uh, boudoir. He got down from his horse and walked it to the outside of a bar and tied it up on the cobblestone street. When he walked inside, all eyes and ears turned as everyone took in his getup. He had left his gang holed up outside of the city. None had been this far toward civilization, and he feared one of them would get drunk or into trouble and disclose the whereabouts of the rest of his gang, who currently sat on a considerable amount of money. Wait a fucking minute. This sounds just like what we're currently doing. With the exception of Dutch being afraid one of us is going to get drunk and tell everyone where the gang is. Having perpetrated a bank holdup against that evil scoundrel on the... Lanat... Hechi... Lana Hechi... Lana Hechi... Train... They had been overrun by detectives outside of Blackwater and had fled north and east as manhunters pose in various guises, scouring the countryside as it. This is literally what I am living right now. As everything from lightning rod salesmen to itinerant peddlers of farming implements in their desperate search for Otis and his gang of kindly outlaws and the sizable bounty their heads were worth. Whiskey, neat, with water back, he said to the barkeep. The barkeep eyed him suspiciously. You wander in off some farm? I reckon maybe I did. He put a dollar down on the bar and looked the barkeep in the eye. A voice behind him hollered out, Don't get much of your lot here in New York City. No, I reckon maybe you don't, he said, turning his head to the side to see a packing bush revolver pointed dead to at his face. The patrons looked on with breathless interest and waited for the outcome. Otis sneered. He had not even taken the trouble to turn around. He looked at the bartender. Let me have another. Yes, sir. And one for my friend here. I ain't your friend. There ain't gonna be no shooting in this bar unless I do it. And presently, you aren't worth the price of a bullet to kill you. Before the man could blink, Otis took a shot of whiskey and whipped around. Grabbing the man's gun and pointing it in his face. You're gonna have to be quicker on the draw. A baby could get the drop on you. What you plan on doing? You gonna shoot me, farm boy? Every detective from here to Chicago will be after you. They already are. Otis sneered and looked the city boy up and down. The bar patrons gazed at one another in silence. Then Otis noticed the man's other hand held a second revolver that had been tucked in the back of his britches. I reckon you ain't the greenhorn I thought you to be. Never thought I'd meet up with the famous Otis Miller, uh, Otis Miller in New York City. Otis smiled and handed him his revolver. You city boys have a queer way of greeting strangers. I'm looking for a Tucker Van Pelt with the 
gas, la gas lamp gang. You found them. The kindly bandit pulled out a handsome gold watch, no doubt the memento of a daredevil raid. He studied the numbers. I reckon you're late. They walked outside and passed a group of women, painted and powdered, who whispered and snickered as they went past. I hear you're interested in pulling a book, uh, pulling a job at the Bank of New York. It's run by nasty folk who exploit the poor. You're gonna need a team of horses to get all that gold out of there. That's a good thing then. What's that? I know just the place to get me such a team. Alright, now if anyone wants to fuck with me, now is the time. I My time is free. So if you wish to fuck with me, you can go right the fuck ahead. But be warned, you'll lose. Nothing? Alright, good. What an interesting story. Obviously there are some beats that aren't the same, but for the most part that just sounds like my story. Twinkie, did you fucking wander off? I think Twinkie wandered off. Eh, yeah, she'll come to me when I whistle. Ah, oh, yes, crows. The, the omens of death. And I do say I see a lot of death here. And by a lot of death, I mean signs of death. Not a lot of bodies. They were either collected in that barn that says stay out plague, which I am definitely not going to heed. Or they done did decay you all already. Wait, what? Oh. Revolver cartridges. I needed those. Okay, so we know we can't get in the wide building. Which is a mighty shame. But that's perfectly fine. I'm going to pick up my pace here. Doesn't matter if I run. I'm not going to run into anything. I think. Well, this here's the chicken coop that I can't really get in. We got an axe here that I think someone was chopping wood. My best guess is these fellas got a uh, judging by the. Th I'll with sin. Wait, there's more. What the fuck is this? I need better lighting. Okay, or the or not. Sinners. I with sin. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So, someone obviously either painted their own house up or the townsfolk painted this fella's house up to blame him for some sort of sin and blame this fella for the tragedy that Dunn did befell them. Well, that's just the... that's just what happens. Now they said that this was a town, but this seems more like... Well, there's a well. It's been closed up. Oh, hey, a coyote. Coyotes ain't no danger. Can I get in here? No, every place seems to be shut and locked. Really hoping the barn ain't locked. Kind of curious as to what's in here. Stay out. Plague. Is this where the dead bodies lie? Well, I can't open that.
Oh, damn. Plant. Okay, well, I can't seem to get uh, get into any of these buildings, so my best guess, Lemoyne Raiders, which that might be some. Are they riding towards me, or I think they're riding away from me? Well, this was a nice little discovery. Okay, my girl. All right. Yeah. Back to murdering Black Bale. Howdy. Oh, we're in the marshlands. Spooky. What happened to your friend? Do I? I have one health cure, so that's not Please gonna happen. I don't wanna die. Uh, help me. Okay, I'm a good Samaritan. Uh, okay. But if you make a big uh, deal out of this, I'm shooting you, friend. Not a word to anyone. You know I mean? I owe you one, mister. Hopefully. To repay you someday. Got that right. Uh, now, I gotta get out of here. Yeah. Yes, you do. Bitten by a snake in the marshlands, dumbass. Yeah. Of course, you're gonna get bitten by the snakes if you're in the marshlands and you ain't careful. That's just what happens. That's why we avoid going in the bush. Unless we were hiding from our enemies that we were trying to trying to shoot. Morning. Morning. Ooh, I like that country rift. Oh, Black Bell's little thing popped up on the marker on the map. That must mean I'm close. And I might... Bye morning, partner. Morning. Let's go ahead and get rid of my waypoint. Okay, <laughs> be careful, Twinkie. Don't you go off. Oh, those are pigs. Excuse me, Miss Bell. Name's Arthur Morgan. I'm here about a book. Hello? You a bounty hunter? Not really. No, I ain't. You Black Bell? I'd like to talk to you about your Wild West days. I don't care much for reminiscing. You got any friends as bounty hunters? No. Spring to mind. Well, then you done led them boys here, and you none the wiser. Ah, those bounty hunters. Knew my luck had run out sooner or sooner. Well, get inside. I'll tell them you're gone. Oh, no, no. I ain't hiding from them scalp hunters. I'm not running from them neither. Okay. Yeah, if it's just me against them, <laughs> that'd be a waste of time and nitroglycerin. Well, let me know what I can do. You want that Wild West story, don't you? 
Yes, I do. All right. Get up here quick. Now when okay. I give word, hit that. Whole place is wired. Black Bell. I got a contract here for your life or your liberty. We'd sooner it be liberty. That's mighty reasonable, mister. Come here, let me take a look at it. Count. Okay. Oh, come on. Stop just there. Send it out. Okay. Oh. How many people did they bring just for you? I mean, what the? Oh. Now, Black Miss ba Black Bell, I've. They got a what? Boom, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm not gonna let that happen. What the hell? Oh. I was about to say, what the hell are you shooting at? Is that the last of them? Probably. Scalp hunters off your back. Uh, for now. For now. So, you gonna tell me about your Wild West days running with Jim Boy Calloway? Little Boy Calloway? <laughs> the only running he did was away from a fight. Sounds That's like a bitch. The end of it. Well, the man's apparently a famous gunslinger. Yeah, so they say. But uh, don't get what's famous confused with what's true. The ones of us that lived that life, we was too busy being scared for our scalp to talk to no newspaper writers or dime novel men. Well, what were they like then? Those days they all talk about. <sighs> Same as now, I guess. Only longer ago. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna need your picture too, if it ain't a trouble. No, sir, no trouble at all. Can't be worse than those awful drawings on the wanted posters. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So you stand over there. Oh, let me get this thing ready. Uh, ready? How do you want me? Like this? Uh. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Then I guess they'll be on my way. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, thank you, Mrs. Bell. You gonna be all right? Oh, been running for 20 years. Suppose I'll be running till I drop. Just the way it is. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> huh. Guess I don't... get that. Huh. I thought I'd have to kill her. Oh well, ain't that big a deal. Now all that's left is Fraco Hernandez and Mr. Billy Midnight, who I still cannot kill until that white shit goes away. In the meantime, I'm gonna see what Abigail wants.